So I think we're putting the cart in front of the horse a little bit here, Michael. Uh, perhaps you can tell the audience what got you started, what got HBA started, what got you involved mm -hmm. in, in this whole effort. Well, maybe I'll talk about the origins of HBA. So yeah. I, I worked for PowerSet um, a long time ago. PowerSet, um, Chad Walters in particular, my boss, decided that um, PowerSet needed something like, the big table paper had just come out and, and it, uh, PowerSet needed something like, um, Big table at the core of their pipeline. So he charged my um, my companion, my compañero, Jim Kellerman, to mm -hmm. try and rattle up some interest in um, in a, a big table plant. Um, later, I, I used to work at Internet Archive, where I worked on notch and dog cutting with there, working on um, uh, trying to do full text. Um, Index for the archive, and then uh, uh, the, the, a lot of the uh, right. origins of uh, had you you know had you a lot of the um, the first versions of had you came out of that work, so I was kind of like following along after Doug. Um, so while I was at the archive, I was working on um, like full text indexing um, and the crawler, Heretrix crawler, yeah. the archive Heretrix crawler, um, and then I talked to the people at PowerSet and I moved over to help out on the um, HBIS project. And it's been going on ever since. That's great. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Michael, you keep bringing up Hadoop. Can you mm -hmm. explain for the audience, you know, I mean, you, you can have a data store in Hadoop also, right? Yeah. So can you explain the differences between Hadoop and HBase? Because they're both parallel, mm -hmm. you know, uh, to a certain extent. And sure, sure, sure. Sorry. So I should have said out front, um, HBase is a, is a sub-project of the Hadoop project. So, um, you know, we use the same repository. And, uh, most of the base types in uh, HBase uh, come from Hadoop, the parent the parent project, um, and you know we write to the distributed uh, Hadoop distributed file system, and uh, that's where all of our data is kept. So replication and all that goodness. Um, <coughs> and so, but yeah, it's true. Um, um, you could you can store your data in Hadoop in, right. in, the, in right. the distributed file system. But the reason you'd want to look, the reason you'd look at the H base is because you want to have real time random access. Oh, I see. Right time or, or read time. That's that's why that's when you would start looking at H base instead of writing files into directly into CFS. So, Michael, some of the more popular databases like MySQL, for example, uh, mm -hmm. you know, they use a, a row based data store, mm -hmm. right? And those are extremely well suited for things like online transaction processing. Mm -hmm. uh, can you? Perhaps differentiate a little bit between your traditional databases that we know and mm -hmm. and HBase. Sure, um, I suppose your traditional databases they always bump up against the uh, the size of the hardware. Generally, you know, you can do exotic shardings, and you know, um, database vendors will supply you with various softwares right. at various prices for doing this this kind of um, distribution, but. <coughs> From the get-go, HBase is is about scaling. So um, um, <clears throat> you just add a machine. So the way it work basically works is, you know, you have a table, um, and the table is divided in, um, you know, into um, in HBase we call them uh, regions, and a region has a, su a subset of rows. Right. But then on a, for each row, there's a um, you know, you have columns. The columns are grouped into column families, but HBase is a column-orientated store. It's got, you know, for every um, for every column family family in, in HBase, there's a you know they all they're all stored co-located, they're all stuck stuck together. So mm -hmm. you can add you know column families, and um, they'll each be in their own little store on disk um, or file system. But you access them all always. Using your primary key, the row, the, the row, you know, the particular row. It's always all access is via the, the primary key, key, whatever the row. Yeah. Is, so. And so you have these regions, and these regions are then. That's the atom that gets moved around on the cluster. Right, right. So um, a particular region server will host, you know, one to thousands of these regions, and you right. know, the machine goes away, they get moved elsewhere, and. And each region will have a certain set of rows, for example. Right? That's right. Okay. This is, this is, um, yeah. Thank you. So, Michael, um, I understand that uh, HBase is an Apache project, just like Hadoop. But how do, how do other developers just really get involved? I mean, what's the chain of command, and how do they just get in there and 
make a, make a difference? Yeah, we take one and we take all. You just, um, hbase.org is where you start. Um, you know, like, uh, you know, just, just the usual format, you know, there's mailing lists. Our, our IRC channel is pretty um, active, so you just, you know, show up there. Um, anybody can get involved. We even we even take Sun employees. George Porter, <laughs> sorry, uh, he um he's been um, yeah. he's been working on um, some really important HDFS optimizations that are going to make a big difference in HP. Great, great. So um, you know, I want to actually thank you very much, Michael, yeah. for coming yeah. and sharing your thoughts with That's us, really. and, and you know, for you, Chris, and enlightening yeah. us on HBase. And um, you know, I look forward to doing this again. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate your time.